The 4% rule is dead. The 4% retirement income rule is dead. Yes, you heard me right. The 4% plus inflation retirement rule championed by the financial industry is absolutely dead. Dead as a doornail. And I'm gonna explain to you exactly why and how you need to be thinking differently about your retirement income withdrawals, especially once you step into retirement. Now, let's look at what other people say about the 4% rule. Well, Dave Ramsey says that you can take out 8% from your retirement savings, and that is perfectly fine. He's also saying you're gonna average about 12% with four specific mutual funds. Is he right? or is he wrong? Bill Bergen, who championed the 4% rule, says, hey, you can take 4% plus inflation, meaning you take 4% this year, next year if inflation's up 3%, you take 4% plus the 3% inflation on that 4%. Is he right? I don't know, you tell me. Others say 2%, 3%. And sometimes even lower. I've seen as low as 1.2% retirement income withdrawal. Now, I believe that every one of those answers is wrong. And I'm gonna tell you why. My answer to this rule, it's neither. It's nobody. Nobody has the perfect answer on your retirement income withdrawal. I believe it's very personalized. So I would say it's a personalized answer. Some of you, it could be 8%. Some of you, it's going to be 4%. Some of you, it's going to be 2 3%. We don't know yet. So let's go through some specific strategies on the board to show you exactly how you can calculate what your percentage for retirement income is so that you can say, hey, the 4% rule is dead because for me, it is this percentage of retirement income. All right, let's go through a very simple strategy to show you the exact difference between the 4% rule and why you do not need to blanket statement, I can use the 4% rule, which is why I label this video, the 4% rule is dead. The reason for that is many of you are retiring early. You're looking at early retirement strategies. So you might be thinking about retiring at 50, retiring at 55, can I retire at 60? 4% at 55 is a lot different than 4% at 65. And let me show you exactly what I mean by that, okay? So we have two strategies. We have two different ages. We have a 55-year-old person here, and we have a 65-year-old person here. Now, the information or data for this individual is gonna be exactly the same. A million dollars in 401k, non-qualified account, whatever, million dollars, okay? We have one individual who's 55 and one individual who's 65. Throw out that we need to use the rule of 55 if all this money's in a 401k, throw out taxes. We're just looking specifically at the data. We're gonna get into a little bit more of a calculated stance here in just a second. We're gonna look at 4% withdrawal plus inflation for both of these scenarios. So $40,000 is our expenses. That's where we're gonna start, 4%, but we're gonna look at 3% inflation on both of these scenarios. So as time goes on, our expenses are gonna grow by 3% inflation, meaning we're gonna have to take off our 4% plus inflation. Okay, to make this last. This is easy. This is future cash flow calculations. We do this all the time. Now, what we're not going to calculate in this scenario is Social Security. We're not going to calculate pensions. We're not going to calculate taxes. This is a very simplistic approach to show you why you need to think differently about the 4% rule. I call this the hub approach, the HUP, H-U-P. I'm from Kentucky, so my P's and my B's all sound the same. Here, understand produce okay jesus told the parable about the man who scattered seed and he said the seed that fell on good soil produced 30 60 and 100 fold we want to hear we want to understand and then we apply this to our retirement income strategy and we produce a good out an outcome okay hear understand produce so we have a 55 year old with a million dollars he needs $40,000 a year to live off of. That's $3,333 per month. 
we've got a 4% rate of return, meaning this money is in some sort of investment vehicle, stock market, CD, money market, annuity, whatever, and it's earning 4%, okay? And that's what we're gonna assume throughout the life of this strategy. We have 3% inflation. So this money here is gonna have inflation on it. So on both situations, we have inflation. From 55 to 65, we're taking out $40,000 a year plus inflation. Okay, even though you're only seeing this in 10 year stretches, when I did the math, we're looking at this on a yearly basis. We actually break it down to a monthly basis, but I'm annualizing it for the video, okay? So we've got a million dollars at 55. At 65, we have $841,349. From 65 to 75, we increase our expenses, right, with inflation. So it goes from $3,333 to $4,610. So we have an increase there. We're still earning that rate of return of 4%, but that inflation number is kicking us in the rear end, right? So now we have $841,349 for at 65, okay? From 65 to 75, that $841 goes down to $369. So in a 10-year span, 4% with inflation, we're down about $500,000 with a 4% rate of return. And you might be going, Drew, that 4% rate of return, that's a really conservative projection for money that's in the stock market. I agree. The market's averaged 10% since 1950, 8% with inflation. You're not going to get 12% rate of return anywhere over the long term. I'm sorry. 10% is what the market's returned, 8% with inflation. So if we go back to 4 that's half of what the market's average. That's pretty conservative. So that's what we're looking at here. So at 75, we got 369,319. Our expenses have grown to 6,360, right? So that only lasts five years now, and we're out of money at 80 years old. That's at 55, 4% with inflation, okay? This is real world. Just not looking at Social Security, taxes, and you know some other actual factors that we'll get into. But this is how it works. 80 years old, okay? Out of money. What was that? 10, 20, is that 25 years? 65, 75, yeah, 25 years. Not even 30 years. Now, even I can do math on my fingers. Again, I'm from Kentucky. That's how we, fingers and toes, after we run out of toes, who knows where we go at that point. All right, now, 65 year old. Looks exactly the same, except now bump it up 10 years, right? 65 to 75, we take out the same amount of money, we're getting the same rate of return, inflation's still the same, 3%, but now at 75, we have 841,349. So you see that? 65 and 75. That's a big difference, right? Because what are you doing at 65 years old? You're traveling. You're hanging out with your grandkids. You're going over to Italy. Or maybe you're going to Italy at Epcot. You're doing some stuff at 65 that you're probably not doing at 75. I'm not saying you're not gonna be healthy at 75, but at 75, you're probably not doing the same things you're doing at 65, you're not as active, okay? Now, 75, 841,349. Between 75 and 85, it's the same thing. We go down to 369, 319. Okay, now look, 75 to 85. Big difference, right? Because what happens at 85? That's our mortality rate for males and females, somewhere between 80, at 80, let's just say 85, right? We're gonna die with some money. Over here at 75, we're like wondering like, are we gonna live long, are we gonna outlive our money? What about long-term care? What about assisted living? And so now we're out at 90, which makes me feel a lot better. But you can see how the 4% rule can't just be applied blanket coverage and say, hey, this is gonna work because of how inflation works, because of how expenses grow. So you've gotta have a more precise plan when it comes to your retirement income. Okay, let's get into a more detailed strategy using these same numbers, but let's throw in Social Security, let's look at some taxes, and let's look at just a little bit more of a realistic scenario. All right, let's go through a detailed strategy of can I retire with a million dollars and why you need to not consider the 4% rule when it comes to planning out your retirement income. I wanna show you why you need to have a more specialized strategy or you might be in danger of running out of retirement income. Remember, the principle that we're using on this video is called HUP, 
H U P, hear, understand, produce. We want to hear the knowledge, we want to understand it, and we want to go out and produce it, right? Just like Jesus told the parable, the man who threw the seed in good soil, 30, 60, 100 fold. We want to produce 30, 60, 100 fold. Now, let's look at this. We've got a 55 year old, we have a 65 year old, they have a million dollars. Okay, now I'm not concerned about saying this is the same person and them working. These are two separate people, 55 year old and a 65 year old. Now, they're both gonna need 4% out of their portfolio to start. So we're looking at 4% plus inflation. They're both gonna get Social Security at 67. So we're gonna wait till the full retirement age to take Social Security. Now, the reason we're gonna wait till 67 is because at 67, you get 100% of your full retirement benefit. If you claim Social Security early, 62, 63, 64, you get a reduced benefit. So at 62, you get 70% of your full retirement benefit. If you claim at 70, if you're an overachiever, a broccoli eater, you're gonna get 124% of your full retirement benefit. Now, I'm not telling you that claiming at 67 is the right decision. What I'm saying is claiming Social Security is a personalized decision and for this video we're going to look at claiming at 67. We could claim earlier but we're just going to look at full retirement age. We're trying to get the data as close to comparable as we possibly can. So we got a million dollars. Now we're 55 years old we've got a million dollars and we're going to assume that this million dollars is in our 401k, our current 401k. So we're going to use the rule of 55 to start taking retirement income. Now, if you've never heard of the rule of 55, I got a lot of videos on this channel about that, but in simplistic form, you can use the rule of 55 to take out retirement income from your current 401k. If you're terminated, you leave your job, or you just you decide to retire in the year that you turn 55. So this person is retiring at 55. They're going to use their current 401k for retirement income. So we're not going to pay the 10% penalty for an early withdrawal under the age of 59 and a half. We still don't pay taxes, but not the 10% penalty. Okay, so rule of 55 over here. Over here, we have a 65 year old. We do not need to use the rule of 55. That million dollars is just in an IRA and it's ready to be used for income. There are taxes on both of these strategies being taken out on the gross side. So the 40,000 is a net figure. So this is a net figure that you're seeing. So the computations have taxes already removed out of them, okay? So they've had to take more for taxes. It's qualified money on both sides. I think I'm getting as close as I possibly can to comparison, okay? Now, 55, we have a million dollars. We need $40,000 a year out of, our in, out of our retirement investment. So that's what our retirement income is. So $3,333. We're gonna earn a 4% rate of return on our money, okay? So 4% is the rate of return we're gonna earn on that million dollars. So it's in the market, it's earning 4%. Okay, we're gonna look at that for the lifetime. Now you guys know, you and me both know, that the market's just not gonna go like this for 4%. It's gonna be like this, right? But if you make 4% this year, and you make 4% next year, that's an annualized what? 4%. If you make 8% this year, and you make 0% next year, that's an annualized 4%. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to calculate as close to 4% as we possibly can. We're also gonna look at inflation. We're gonna use 3%. Now 3.27% is the 109 year average for inflation. We're gonna use 3%. So we're gonna come down just a little bit. So we're gonna give inflation a little bit of a check there. We're gonna use 3% as a round number. Now, 55 to 67, that's 12 years of income. So we got a million dollars, we're taking out $333 a month. At age 67, we have $714,643. You see that? Million to 714, okay? Now, over here, we're 65. We only got two years till we get to full retirement age. So from 65 to 67, that's two years. We go from a million, we actually go to a million 31. We actually grow our money $31,000. Less time to pull out of our investments. This is more time. And the more time you have to pull out money from your investments, the less time you have for growth, right? Because we're pulling that out. Now at 67, we're starting Social Security. So we've got our expenses here and we've got Social Security here. Now what I want you to notice on both of these scenarios, 
Let me show you a difference. 65 years old, we have Social Security of $3,000, okay? 55 years old, Social Security of $2,500. We're assuming that this person continued to work, adding to their work history, increasing their Social Security, okay? This person stopped working at 55. There might have been a lot of zeros in their work history when, it's when, when Social Security is calculating their Social Security benefits. So we're at 2,500. So we stopped working earlier, we had a lesser social security check. That's something you gotta think about. If you're gonna think about retiring early, you gotta be thinking, what's my social security check gonna be if I quit working early and I start putting goose eggs up on the board on my work history? Because you might have a social security statement in front of you, but there's some fine print on that social security statement that says, if you keep working, this is what your social security payment would be. If you retire at 55, it could be 12 years, or it could be seven years, or it could be 15 years before you collect Social Security. What's that payment actually gonna be? You need to think about that if you're wanting to retire early and you need to think about Social Security. So, Social Security is 2,500. So for the 55 year old, we need 2,497 from our retirement investments, right? 4,997 is our expenses, 2,500 Social Security, you subtract those two, $2,497 or basically 2,500 bucks per month has to come out, what is that, $30,000 a year? Has to come out of this 714,643. So we go from 714 to 445 over a 10 year period, right? Now we're dropping even faster at 77. At 77, our expenses go to 6893. Our social security does have a COLA increase, right? 3225, that's a COLA increase of about two and a half percent for social security. And now we need 3,668. We're out of money at 84 years old, 84. And if we put social security at 62, it actually bumps that down to 82 years old. So people might comment like, hey, they take social security early, that's gonna alleviate some of this pain. Not really, not in this scenario. It actually bumps it up to 82 years old. I'll put that on here so you know, 82 social security early. So in this case, we might have to put some other things into place. Okay, let's go to 65. Million dollars. Social Security is 3,000. So from 65 to 67, we go to 1 million 31. Now, our expenses go from 3,300 basically to 3,500, right? Two year span. Social Security kicks on. We need 500 bucks out of our portfolio. So $6,000 a year. So you actually grow, look at that. In 10 years, we go $350,000 or basically $320,000. 1 million 31 to 1350. I'm running out of toes and fingers when it comes to counting. Now at 77, we got 1.3. Our expenses have grown about $1,400. You see that? 49997, but our social security has gone to 3970. That's with the coal increase. So now we need $1,000 out of our investments. And at 87, we got $1.4 million. So this is a great scenario. The person keeps on growing, even though they're taking money out of their investments. Now, obviously they've worked longer. They have a longer work history. So their social security is higher. They've had to probably work a, a, a lesser paying job because at 65, they have a million dollars now, whereas this person at 55 had a million dollars. So they saved more. Maybe they sacrificed a lot more earlier and this person did not. So they had to work earlier. I just want you to see the scenario and say, hey, when it comes to me, it has to be a personalized, retirement income withdrawal. It can't be something that just says, I'm gonna take out 4% or I'm gonna take out 8% or I'm gonna take out 3%. No, no, it needs to be personalized. Remember, we're talking about taxes, inflation, rates of return, when do we collect social security? And we didn't even talk about how are our investments allocated. We didn't talk about any of the risk on our money. So there's a lot that goes into calculating how much you need to pull out of your retirement income. And listen, if you'd like to meet with us to go over a financial EKG for you, all the details are below. But hey, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.